Hi guys, this is just a quick video on how to correctly wire the PDM-I12 passive infrared detector from Vanderbilt Industries. This PIR has been around for a number of years and is extremely popular around the world and especially popular in Australia. But new customers still are having trouble with wiring the detector since the terminals are unlike most other detectors on the market. But today I'll show you how easy it is to wire and install. But first, let's just have a real quick look at the features of this product. The PDM-I12 is part of the magic series of detectors from Vanderbilt Industries in Europe. And it has its origins as a Swiss designed and built product. The PDM-I12 uses magic mirror technology. It is both sensitive and reliable in its detection performance. It has a modern and elegant design. It's extremely energy efficient. It uses only 2.5 milliamps of current. And as you'll see today, it is very quick and easy to install. This detector has a 12 meter wide angle lens and it has the option to be a 20 meter curtain detector. The detector is the only completely flat faced PIR that I'm aware of on the market. So let's have a look at it. So note from our discussions today we're really we're only talking about the PDM-I12 as you can see on the label here. So we have the detector, the instructions, and a cable tie. Notice the design, even with the flat face of the detector, it still manages to have a full look down zone to detect directly under it. So that's not too bad for Swiss technology, hey? Because of this, this detector can be fully flush mounted in a wall and that will provide a totally streamlined appearance to the PIR. Apart from the flush mount kit, you can add a PZ MBG2 mounting bracket and that's good for wall or ceiling use. You can also use any camera bracket with a one quarter inch thread to mount the PIR with the optional PZ CA adapter. To make the detector pet immune, add the PO-CL pet clip. To open the PIR from the unit, pry it apart, we we'll use our screwdriver, put it in here, twist and lift up. From here, we can see the terminal block and the wiring details. If we're using the Vanderbilt SPC intrusion panel, or in fact any panel with selectable end of line resistance values, we can simply wire the 12 volt, the ground, the C1 and C3 terminals to our zone input, close the detector and you're done. Program your SPC panel for dual 4K7 resistors and you can go and have an early lunch. There's no need to watch the remainder of this video. But for the rest of you, stay tuned. Okay, let's break down what we need to do step by step. Let's look at mounting the detector. It can be mounted to the wall in four different ways. It can be mounted on its left side, on its right side, it 
directly on the back if it's mounted no higher than 2.6 meters if it's mounted higher than 2.6 meters use the bottom screws this actually gives the detector a two degree incline to better detect you will notice the detector lid has a tamper switch this is great to detect the face of the detector if it's removed from the base but what if the detector base is yanked off the wall to enable this make sure you use one of the mounting screw holes here that way if the detector is yanked off the wall this back bracket will stay on the wall and the detector will be removed from it and activate the tamper okay now for the wiring you should notice that the terminal block has not got the standard connections that you would expect on a detector and probably scratching your head a little bit there's no alarm contacts and there's no tamper contacts on seeing that you would have then thought oh, I'll go to the enormous instruction manual and you probably struggled to find English since this detector is sold worldwide you know and the manual is in about probably 210 different languages so to find the information you need can be a little bit cumbersome but ultimately all we're looking for is this diagram that's in the top right corner of the instruction manual and this will be where our guide starts I'm going to show you three methods to wire the detector let's assume your alarm panel is going to be using 6k8 resistors for the alarm circuit and 2k2 resistor for the tamper circuit number one method if you aren't using the 4.7k resistors with the detector then remove them so pull them out of the detector it's always important to remove these if you're not going to be using the 4k7 resistors that come with it you can then cut your, your resistors with this template that's listed here Then insert the 6K8 into the intrusion. If you can see there, intrusion is the second resistor. And then install your 2K2 into the one that says end of line. Please note, I haven't got a 6K8 or a 2K2 resistor, so I've just used the same value for this demonstration. If you're only using a single end of line resistor, then you insert it into the intrusion and will remove EOL value. In doing so, we need to also put the jumper on if we're using single end of line resistors only otherwise we leave it in its default off position as it was so now for method two we can purchase a resistor kit that has your end of line resistance values already set so we simply insert the pack into the holes at the top 
and you can purchase these resistor packs in bags of 100. Method three, this is the old fashioned way of wiring. So we'll go to our terminal strip and have a look at our C1, our C2 and our C3. We need to insert the alarm resistor into the C1 and the C3. Then install your tamper resistor from C3 to spare. Then wire your zone across the C1 and spare. Using this method, it is important to ensure that the jumper on the detector is shorted or turned on. For single end of line applications, wire the end of line re resistor across C across C3 and spare. Your zone wiring will remain the same. As shown here. The jumper also remains on. You can adjust the sensitivity of the detector by using dip switch 2 and dip switch 3 according to this guide. And you're done. That's it. You can close the detector up and that completes the installation. The last point of discussion though is you may have noticed this little clip. This can be removed. So when your detector is closed and mounted on the wall, it can be used to cover that hole. So we're done. As always, if you require further information, please refer to the show notes below. And I look forward to see you on our next Alarm Corp product video. Have a great day and goodbye for now.